Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence tutorial on soft modding the Sony PlayStation 3. So by the end of this video, I'll show you guys how to back up your PlayStation 3 discs, PlayStation 2 discs, original PlayStation discs, and your PSP games onto the internal storage of the PlayStation 3 so that you can store those game discs away for safekeeping. So this is a pretty exciting video. Uh, basically the guys over at ps3exploit.com have just released for the first time in about seven years an exploit for the current official firmware for the PlayStation 3. So what that means is that prior to this, if you had a PlayStation 3, you had to either find one that had a really old firmware that hadn't been updated in years, or you had to do a hardware downgrade, which required you to solder about 50 wires onto the board uh, to be able to downgrade the firmware to an exploitable version. So now with this new release, we'll be able to soft mod our PlayStation 3 using nothing more than a thumb drive. Now the first thing we're going to do is launch a little application that's going to tell you if your hardware is compatible with this custom firmware. And I'm about to tell you guys that if you have a slim or a super slim that's not compatible, that you're just going to have to wait for an exploit to come out, but I've got some good news there. The guys over at ps3exploit.com just released about a week ago uh, an exploit for those unsupported slims and super slims. Basically it doesn't allow you to load a custom firmware like we're going to do with this older hardware. Uh, but it will allow you to back up your game discs and play them from internal storage. I'll be putting together a video on how to do that with the unsupported Slim and Super Slim, so stay tuned for that. Alright, so the first thing that we want to do is make sure that our hardware is compatible with the custom firmware that we're trying to load onto it. So I have a blank FAT32 formatted thumb drive, and you're going to want to make sure throughout this entire process that you plug the thumb drive into the USB port that's closest to the Blu-ray drive. Um, you can do this next part on the PS3 if you want. I'm going to do it on the computer. Basically, we're going to go to ps3exploit.com without an E. From the Flash Rider menu, we'll download MinVerCheck. We'll unzip that into the thumb drive and then plug it into the PS3. So from Flash Rider, we'll download MinVer. Plug in the thumb drive here. And from the downloads, I'll pull that zip file right into the thumb drive, then unzip it. And I'll delete it off the thumb drive. And so you can see now there's a PS3 folder inside of that. It's a folder called update. Inside of that is ps3updat.pup, all in caps. I'm going to go ahead and eject that and plug it into the PS3. All right, now back on the PlayStation 3, we'll go all the way to the left over to settings, system update. We'll do update from storage media, hit OK. And you can see here that the minimum version is 1.0. That means that this PlayStation 3 is an original from launch date, which is pretty cool. Um, basically, what you want to note is that if you have 3.56 or below, you are good to proceed. If your minimum version is above 3.56, this is not going to work. You need to go find an older PS3. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is check out current version of the firmware that we are actually running. So let's jump back on here and we'll go down to settings, system information. And you can see here we're running version 4.80. So if you are on anything lower than 4.82, you need to update to 4.82. So to do that, let's open Chrome again and we'll type in PlayStation 3 OFW for official firmware. You can see here it says 4.81, but when you go to the link on PlayStation.com, you can see that it's actually 4.82. So we'll go ahead and download that. And I'm going to plug the thumb drive back into the computer here. On the thumb drive inside the PS3, inside the update folder, I'm going to delete the PUP file that's in there. And we'll pull over this PUP file that we just downloaded. Now I'll go ahead and eject that thumb drive and plug it back into the PS3. Now back on the PS3, we'll exit out of here, go all the way to the top of the settings menu, system update, we'll update via storage media, and we'll go ahead and install that 4.82. I'm actually going to cut the video here because I'm going to install a different hard drive into my PS3. Alright, so at this point you should be at version 4.82 of the official firmware. You can see here my storage capacity also increased, I put a 1500 gig hard drive in. You can't put a 2 terabyte, the PlayStation 3 can't handle it, uh, so if you're trying to go bigger, you can go up to a 1.5 terabyte. Um, so now that we're on 4.8.2, um, you can go through these steps. It's optional to back up your PS3. It's a good idea when you're messing with firmware. The problem is to recover any of this stuff, you'll probably have to use a hardware flasher. 
Um, so I'm just going to skip it, but I did it the first time that I tried it, so it's a good idea to make a backup. So basically now I'm going to jump into the jailbreak for the PS3. Um, we're going to download the hex file from the flash writer menu. Uh, we'll save that on the USB thumb drive, and then we'll go to write it from the USB and pick our version. So real quick, let me show you guys what that looks like. Uh, so under the flash writer menu from USB, there's NAND and NOR. So let's open up both of these and take a look. So you can see for the NOR flasher, um, you need to have a fat model with this serial number or a slim model with this one. Um, and for the NAND flasher, you're going to have a fat model uh, ending with this serial number. So make sure you know which one you are if you're NAND or NOR. Um, you have to be one or the other. You can't be both. And it's going to be important to pick the right one. Okay, so now that we know uh, there's a difference there, we'll select that, set it as our home page. We'll delete all four of the delete menus and close the browser and relaunch it. Um, so let's go ahead and do that on the PlayStation 3. I've already formatted the thumb drive and put it back into the PS3. Again, in the USB port closest to the Blu-ray drive. So we're going to launch the web browser. All right, so in here with the flash writer menu, we'll go to dump flash hex file. So with it highlighted, we're gonna press triangle, we're gonna go to file, we're gonna hit save target, and we're gonna stick it on the USB device. All right, now that that's completed, we'll go up here and write flash from USB, and I'm using NAND hardware, so I'm gonna pick NAND, make sure you pick the one for your hardware. Uh, on this page, I'm gonna go to tools, home page, and I'm gonna say use current and hit okay. Then I'll go back into tools and we'll do all four of these deletes here. Now I'll exit the browser and we'll relaunch it. We'll hit OK. Now we'll hit initialize exploitation. And once it says success, we'll say patch NAND flash memory. And now at this point, we have jailbroken our PlayStation 3. So once the flashing is complete, we're gonna exit the browser, power it down, remove the thumb drive, and jump back on the computer. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now that the PS3 is shut down and I've pulled the thumb drive out, um, we need to go and download the custom firmware that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna to go to this website here. This is on psxplace.com. And I'm gonna go down here to the 482 CFW tab. And I'm gonna get 482 Ferox with Cobra 755. Um, you can pick any one of these you want. This is the one I'd like to run. Basically, I'm just going to click this download link here. All right, so now that that download's complete, I'm going to plug the thumb drive back into the computer here. We'll delete the hex file that's on there. Um, and I'm going to create a folder in the root of the thumb drive called PS3. Inside of that folder, I'm going to create another folder called Update, all caps. Inside of there, I'm going to copy that pup file that we just downloaded and paste it there. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and rename this file. I'm going to name it ps3updat.pup, all caps. I'm going to go ahead and eject the thumb drive, plug it into the PS3. All right, now with the PS3 booted back up and the thumb drive plugged in, we'll go to Settings, System Update, Update from Storage Media, and you can see here it's found 4.82 Ferox Cobra 755, so we'll go ahead and install that. All right, so now that we've successfully installed our custom firmware, if you go to the Game menu, you'll see a couple new additions here. The first thing we're gonna do is go into Package Manager, click Install Package Files, and we'll do it from the system storage. We're gonna install this Ferox mod installer. All right, now that that's complete, we can see that it's added this mods installer, so we'll go ahead and run that. Hit OK, hit OK, accept. And so the first thing we want to install is the homebrew store, so we'll go ahead and install it. And we'll go ahead and reboot, and we'll do a hard reboot. All right, now as an optional step, we'll go back into the Ferox mod installer and install the visual mods. You don't have to do this, but it'll add the Ferox logo. It looks kind of cool to the home screen there. So now we'll click graphic mods and install those. And again, we'll reboot and do a hard reboot. All right, so now we've got the little Ferox logo there in the bottom, kind of looks cool. Um, let's pull up our instructions and see what's next. 
Um, so another optional step, I'm going to skip this one, but you can set your QA flag. Um, this is good to do if you want to change to another custom firmware in the future. You basically turn on this QA flag that will allow you to install other firmwares, basically any firmware that you want, back to what that min vercheck told us. So that's useful to do. I recommend doing it, but I'm not going to do it for this video. So the next thing that we want to do is install our backup managers to be able to backup our games. So I'm going to go to the homebrew store, I'm going to go to backup manager, and we'll install multi-man. Alright, so back on the PS3 now, if we go to network, we can see we have the cyber modding homebrew store at the top of our list here, so we'll pull that up. And the first thing I'll do is scroll to the right here and switch this to English. And then I'll go to backup manager. And we'll scroll down and we'll get this multi-man. And we'll save it to our thumb drive. Alright, now that multi-man has completely downloaded, we'll go ahead and exit the browser. And we'll go back to our game menu and we'll go to our package manager, install package files. We'll do a standard install. And you can see here it automatically finds our multi-man PKG file that's on the thumb drive. So we'll go ahead and launch that. And once that's complete, we now have multi-man in our menu here. So we'll go ahead and launch that. Okay, so after launching Multi-Man, for some reason I think my capture card strips out the audio, but when I did this on the TV, um, there's a bunch of background music that plays by default in Multi-Man. So if you come over here to Settings, scroll pretty far down this list, um, you can see there's a lot of customizations you can do here, but I go to Theme Audio and just disable the music. Okay, so now inside of Multi-Man, I'm going to insert my Assassin's Creed PlayStation 3 disc into the PS3. And when it shows up here, I'm going to go ahead and hit square. I'm going to hit X on copy, and I'll pick the hard drive. And this will copy the Blu-ray disc onto our hard drive. Okay, now that our PlayStation 3 game is completed backing up, I'm going to go ahead and eject the disc, and I'm going to put it in Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 for PlayStation 2. Okay, so now with the game in there, I'll just go up to refresh. Sometimes it'll show up, sometimes it won't. It looks like right now it's not going to work. Um, so what I'm going to do is quit multi-man and then relaunch it. And now we can see it says our PS2 disc. So this time instead of hitting square, I'm going to hit triangle for PlayStation 2 and we're going to go to create ISO we'll do that on the hard drive. Alright, now that our PlayStation 2 disc is done backing up, I'll go ahead and eject it and again put the original Tony Hawk Pro Skater disc for the original PlayStation into the PS3. Alright, you can see it recognized it as a PlayStation disc, so we'll hit triangle and create ISO and we'll stick it on the hard drive again. Alright, now that our original PlayStation game is done ripping, I'm going to go ahead and exit Multi-Man. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to go and do is install Webman. So we'll go back to the homebrew store again. Uh, again, we'll go all the way to the right and change our language to English. And we'll go to Backup Manager. And in here we'll install the Webman mod. And I'm just going to use the original. Again, we'll save it to our thumb drive. Once that downloads complete, we'll go ahead and exit the browser. And we'll go to Game and the Package Manager. We'll install package files, again from standard. And this time we'll install Webman. All right now, if you hover over this uh, Webman mod and wait for it to scroll you'll see it says hold down L1 for full edition so I'm gonna hold down L1 and hit X on it 
So we'll go ahead and install the full edition of Webman. Okay, so I had to go back and hit uh, just regular X on Webman mod a second time. Um, and so that adds this Webman games folder. So inside of here, you can see there's one PS3 game, one PS2 game, one PlayStation game. Right now, this one doesn't have an avatar. I'll show you guys how to do that in a minute. But you can see that our games are loaded up here. Um, and basically, if you just click on it, it'll load it kind of as a virtual disk. And the PlayStation will treat it as if that disk is actually in the drive. Okay, so the next thing we'll look at is the FTP setup. Um, basically, now your PlayStation 3 will start an FTP server automatically when you turn it on. So if you go into your network settings and you go to your connection status and you look at your IP address, you can see here I'm .108. If we pull up a browser and go to 192.168.1.108, um, Webman actually puts out a web front end that'll let you go through. And for example, you can see your games here and you can actually launch them from here. Um, you can do all kinds of different setup. I actually had to disable the dynamic fan control um, because my fan took off so that helped a little bit um, but looking at FTP if we launch FileZilla we can go to 192.168.1.108 and just connecting as anonymous with no password you can see here's our PlayStation 3 so if we go to dev HD 0 our backups of our PlayStation 3 games will be inside the games folder so here's our Assassin's Creed um, our PlayStation 2 are in PS2 ISO and our original PlayStation is in PSX ISO. Um, so I have a file here on the desktop that's the image that I want to be the thumbnail for that. So what I'm gonna do is rename it. I'm gonna copy the file name and rename my JPEG image the same file name. And then I'll just drag that onto the PS3 right in that same folder. And after I reboot, my original PlayStation game should have its little logo now. Um, so now if you have a PSP, I'll show you guys how to get your PSP ISOs onto there. Um, and I have a PSP video where I show you guys how to rip the ISOs from the game cartridges onto the computer. Um, so if you haven't followed that yet, go check that out. And then basically, inside the PSP ISO folder here, I will just copy this game ISO I have. All right, now that our PSP ISO is done uploading, uh, in order to play it, we need to install the PSP loader on our PlayStation. So we'll go to the Homebrew store, and we'll change this back to English. And down here on the other apps page, scroll all the way down to PSP launcher, and we'll go ahead and download that. Again, saving it on the thumb drive. And now that that download is complete, we'll go ahead and exit the browser. And we'll go back to Game, Package Manager, Install Package Files, Standard. And we'll launch the Cobra USB PSP Launcher. Alright, now that that's complete, we should be able to go into here and see our PlayStation Portable. So it's not going to show up there. I'm going to go ahead and power cycle the PS3 real quick. Alright, so now that we've power cycled our PlayStation 3, if we go back in here to the Webman Games folder, you can see that under PlayStation 3 we have Assassin's Creed. In PS2 we've got Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. In the original PlayStation we've got Tony Hawk Pro Skater. And in PSP we've got our ISO there as well. So now we're ready to play games straight from the hard drive. One quick thing to note is that I did have to go back into here and change the file extension on the thumbnail for the original PlayStation. It should be .jpg. JPEG will not work. Uh, so hopefully at this point you guys have a fully modded PlayStation 3 capable of backing up your PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, PSX, and PlayStation Portable games to the hard drive. So as always, stay tuned and thanks for watching.